Hi, this is Keith. I'm at Monroe Lake in Brown County, Indiana. I'm at the put-in off Steel Road. It's got a nice boat launch, Porta Johns, and a nice big parking lot. Gonna do a little canoeing and camping with a group from the Prairie State Canoeists. If you want to paddle Lake Monroe, you'll need a sticker from the Indiana DNR. You can see from the flooded trees, the lake water level is high. There's also a lot of spring pollen covering the water. And the pollen rings on the trees show that the water was about four feet higher recently. Since it's Memorial Day weekend, we didn't waste any time finding a place to camp. Someone had carved a notch into this hill, just the right size for my tent. Someone built a nice seating area, and there's a fire pit overlooking the lake. We made some dinner and enjoyed a fire. I do love the nightlife out here. Morning came, and there's no snooze button on Mother Nature, so I better get up and start to explore. Lake Monroe is a man-made lake formed in 1965. The Army Corps of Engineers built this dam to make a reservoir to provide drinking water to the residents of Bloomington, Indiana. Its shoreline can get muddy. The shore of natural lakes and rivers builds up sand and gravel over tens of thousands of years. This lake shore has only been here for about 50 years, so there's still a lot of mud. Wakes from boats do not help as the waves further erode the shoreline. Since this was dry ground 60 years ago, you'll find unusual things like this telephone pole standing in the lake. This old road also disappears into the water. There was a town that was moved as the lake was being planned. Brown County was once a shallow sea and the rock that formed was sedimentary shale, siltstone, and sandstone. After the bedrock formed, it was pushed up by tectonic movement and eroded into ravines with steep slopes by water. This area was not covered by glaciers, but the meltwater runoff carved the hills and valleys that make Brown County so beautiful. Monroe Lake is big. It covers over 10,000 acres. The largest part is for recreational boats. The smaller section has more primitive campsites. It's popular with fishermen and paddlers of all kinds. Hi. There's plenty of wildlife, which is a surprising conservation story. This area was mostly treeless by the 1850s as the timber was cut to build homes and barns. The poor soil and hillsides made poor farmland and erosion quickly washed away the topsoil. Wildlife was hunted and by 1900 there was little left. Today the area is managed and there are signs of beavers. They eat the inner bark of these trees for food. They can even take down some bigger trees. Look, there's a beaver now. Great blue herons can be seen fishing and flying all over the side of the lake. Turkey vultures fly over the area near where Salt Creek feeds the reservoir. Songbirds 
like this red-winged blackbird, can be seen all over the lake. We found an eagle's nest, but could not tell if there was anyone home. Insects and spiders are plentiful, and it's May, so there were plenty of ticks out walking around. Snapping turtles live in the lake. This one has seen better days. It's May, and there's lots of plants sprouting. Flowers of all shapes and colors. If you don't know what poison ivy looks like, here's some growing on a tree. Remember to look for the leaves of three. Much of the lake is in Hoosier National Forest, but there are still some buildings around. They're hard to see through the trees. The campsites are free, but find one early on busy weekends. The views are beautiful, even at night. And they've got convenient parking right out front. Some campsites have sloping shores that lead into the water. Some sites are a little too close to the water. Like I said, the water is high for this time of year. It's a little higher. There's a fire ring right here under the water. Is this one on the map? No, I think no. Paddling amongst the trees was peaceful. There were acres of flooded woods to explore. What river is this? It's the middle fork of the Salt Creek. For this trip, I brought my old Grumman canoe because I wanted to do some sailing. I had not used the sail for many years but I understand that canoe sailing is big in Europe. It was a perfect day to sail. The wind was a bit gusty, and I was a bit rusty, but it all came back quickly, and I kept the canoe upright. As beautiful as Brown County is, all adventures must come to an end. As I paddled back to the boat launch, I saw dozens of kayakers coming in. There were two boats at the launch and another family with kayaks ready to get in the water as I loaded up. I passed through Nashville, Indiana on my way out of town and I stopped at Sugar Creek Barbecue for some lunch. This is not an endorsement, but they make a good plate of pulled pork, just what I needed for the long drive home.